Good afternoon. I'm Dr. John Noseworthy, President and CEO of Mayo Clinic. I'd like to welcome those of you with us in the chapel and those watching via webcast. His Holiness will be taking questions from the audience after the talk. If you have a question, please write it on the card you were given and pass it to the outside aisles. The questions will be collected and added to those which were submitted earlier. We are fortunate to have Kathy Werzer to act as our moderator today. Kathy is a journalist, author, and longtime host of Almanac on Twin Cities Public Television. I am truly honored to introduce His Holiness, the 14th Dalai Lama, the spiritual leader of the Tibetan people. The Dalai Lama's tireless efforts on behalf of human rights and world peace have brought him international recognition. He is the recipient of the Raoul Wallenberg Congressional Human Rights Award, the Albert Schweitzer Humanitarian Award, the Congressional Gold Medal, and the Nobel Peace Prize. He is also a friend to Mayo Clinic and is the recipient of our deep gratitude for having so kindly given his time to meet and talk with our staff. Each time we are privileged to hear His Holiness speak is a gift. Today he will be speaking about compassion in healthcare, a value that we hold dear at Mayo Clinic. Caring and compassion for our patients is part of our history and integral to our calling as caregivers and Mayo employees. Please join me in welcoming His Holiness, the Dalai Lama. Thank you. Thank you. I, I think you can come here. Can I think you stay here. I think you moderator. should stay here. <laughs> huh. Otherwise, not nice. Empty chair here. <laughs> Maybe for some ghost. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I extremely feel great honor having this opportunity to meet uh, people who are working here. I think you really making I think I said a great little contribution to further development of this uh, Mayo Clinic, which is I think very famous. I think uh, hundreds thousands of patients I say come here with great hope. And you provide fulfillment of their hope. So great thing, really great thing. Uh, so then those doctors and nurses, uh, I think when you treating parva, treat, uh, treating patient, who oh, really sort of are said they the physical level also painful. The mental level also, you see a lot of disturbances. And I think the doctors, nurses also, you see, sometimes it's a little bit sort of, sort of unpleasant sort of experience or difficulties. But in spite of that, you dedicate it, serving, serving, taking care. So wonderful, wonderful. And me, personally, 
also, you see, I can say an old patient of this clinic. <laughs> I think over, I think nine years, I think, right? I think nine years. Uh, so this time, you see, I spent here over one month for medical treatment. So all concerned, firstly, doctors, and then those nurses or technicians. They really uh, very, very kind to us. I think besides, they are sort of also the profession, sort of also the duty. But they really showing as the human uh, sense of friendship, which is based on human love, human compassion. Actually, love. So, there, so therefore, I feel great honor is to come here and meet and speak. And then place, because of the chapel, right? The chapel, but the image of Jesus Christ. Of course, uh, I think over the, uh, thousand years, you see, among humanity, there are non-believers also there. One of the very, very ancient one school of thought of India, you see, non-believer, a lot of criticism about spirituality. So in any way, you see, human history, there are people who do not believe these things. Uh, and then today's world, out of seven billion human beings, over one billion, non-believer. Uh, at the same time, over, I think, three, four thousand years, faith, a different part of the world, faith, you see, uh, come or develop. So we can imagine over a few thousand years, how many millions of people get tremendous of inspiration particularly when they are passing through difficulties uh, which beyond their control, or beyond their control, of the control of the world, huh? then the faith provides the basis of hope. Even dying person with faith still, isn't there something? be optimistic, optimistic, like that. So therefore, <coughs> so I feel great honor. I previously also used to talk this same room, and this time also, so now I have the opportunity to talk as such, because of that holy Kasota, sacred place. So thank you. And then also I want to thank your sort of introduction about me. So usually I prefer simply call me brother, brother. I feel that uh, I think really touch Basic uh, human being, rare. Humanness. basic human level, ah. humanness. humanness. Uh, different rank or different sort of the name according to the professions. Uh, these are the secondary level, I feel. So, so the other day, uh, when I show this is my needs, some specialist, he asked me how to address to you, Ray. No. Uh, then just I answered, oh, please describe me, brother. Very good. I really feel, come closer. If someone say, as, as you mentioned, his holiness, Dalai Dal Lama. <laughs> <laughs> But, but you didn't make 
mistake. <laughs> but some people, you see, they, you see, try to say His Holiness, but sometimes they say His Excellency. <laughs> <laughs> so then, then, because quickly you see, correct, His Holiness. <laughs> <laughs> Extra burden, you see, no problem. Because <laughs> no, no need, because of such a formality like that. So, uh, so basically, we are the same human being. I consider, you see, the, if we consider others as a human brother or sisters, then we really. Uh, because of the uh, talking or expressing on human level. When we stress the secondary level of differences, including different faith, different nationality, and within same faith, same nationality, rich and poor, or educated, uneducated, influential, or not as uh, innocent. And then, then the problem which we are facing is actually uh, developed on that level of see, differences. If we think, if we go at the basic level, fundamental level, we are the same human being. Uh, no demarcation. I think if we really, as if, uh, how should I say, emphasis, on sameness of seven billion human beings, I think much problem certainly can reduce. So therefore, I always start my talk, brothers, sisters. So, so I really very much happy, uh, great honor, speak. Now, uh, usually, usually I have, oh, I think the person, I think wrong, this is, should not put on, on this one. Jacob? This, 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 no, no, this is better. Okay. More, more stable. Just always. Always like that. <laughs> Whenever, you see, person you see, who put this, just, they always try to hide this wire. Nonsense. <laughs> In any way, you see, you know this. <laughs> so I prefer, remain like this. <laughs> uh. So I usually used to tell, uh, expressing or telling people if I too much concern or emphasis importance or my sort of this because of the secondary level of differences. I am Asian, I am Buddhist, I am Buddhist monk, I'm Tibetan. Then furthermore, I'm as you mentioned, His Holiness Dalai Lama. Uh -huh. So if I so they consider that is something important. Then actually, I create myself some kind of wall. And in that wall, I'm a lonely person. Out of seven billion human beings, only one Dalai Lama. Isn't it? And feel lonely. And also, when meet people, if I too much emphasis, I'm Dalai Lama. His Holiness. That mental attitude creates some barrier. When I think I'm a human being, the audience are a human being, no barrier. I can talk what I feel. Whenever I give talk, no homework, no prepared sort of statement or pre prepared thing. Just whatever come in my mind, just to talk like that. So I think sense of oneness of seven billion human beings 
This is very important. Now, today's world, we really need that. So, in order to, uh, how should I say, in order to become a harmonious humanity, we need that kind of concept. So, we need effort whenever you see we have possibility to educate people. We are the same human beings. I think I often used to tell in hospital, uh, concerned people in hospital, you see, you have you see, that kind of concept. When some patient come, you see, you, uh, I said, uh, your sort of treatment or your attitude is no differences, whether poor or, or, or rich or believer or non-believer, this nation or that nation. We simply accept as a human patient. So that spirit is very important. So that also is one example. If doctor is making some discrimination on the differences of secondary level, uh, and then many people is get disappointment, and even if some sort of because of the short tempers already, no. short tempers of the people. If you make sort of uh, inquiring, what is your faith? What is your nationality? Or these things, or they may they may get boxing. <laughs> they make they make sort of they make sort of do like that. Yeah. So therefore, oneness of human being. Actually, uh, so I think the uh, people who working patients or illness, I think that spirit is there. So that, uh, I hope, is in many fields, uh, including politicians' mind, I think that concept need. Otherwise, many problems which we are facing is actually our own creation, right? like that. So, compassion and health care. So, compassionate sort of a sense of generosity, taking care about patients, patients' life, and you taking care of one person, the patients, some friends or some family members. So, when you, I said, they provide because of that love and your professions and cure at least 10 15 people get immense sort of happiness oh happiness so like that in because i care okay. health care oh, health care so so now today i want to spend our time more like because interaction right question and answer. So please start questions. <laughs> hmm? And some comment also, including some criticism. Here sometimes I jokingly, you see, telling, uh, you see, our tradition, you see, the way of training from young age, you see, we use a lot of logics. Uh, any subject, when we're learning, when we learn, when we're learning, uh, sort of the, the difference of our city, uh, topics, and uh, topics, we always, you see, uh, through logical anal analy analyzation. So as a, a person who trained age from uh, I think seven, eight years. So more argument come. Uh, I feel very happy to debate, to argue. <laughs> Your Holiness, it's a pleasure. Nice to see you again. I was taking notes as I was listening to you about respect and being human when you are 
treating and working with patients. Mm -hmm. You talked a little bit about diversity. How can we instill respect for the diversity of others here as we work in the healthcare industry? Firstly, I think nobody argue the way our life form in mother's womb. Then during that period, even that period, is a child. I don't know. The first week, second week, first month, second month, I don't know. But then gradually, you see, a little bit of a church. I think after a few months, I think the mother's mental state very much important. The unborn child, mother's sort of mental state, happy, calm. The unborn child also you can get some sort of positive because of that, because of that uh, impact. The mother constant fear, anger, more easy to mind, very harmful for their child. Then after birth, after born, obviously the child no idea who is that person, but biologically, immediately, see the very close closeness feeling towards mother. And the mother also, uh, no matter how sort of at that moment, a little bit of little, 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 dirty, dirty sort of delicate, but mother, really. So that's human nature. Seven billion human beings start that way. Even today's also the merciless leaders or people, their life start that way. Then at the end, seven human beings, same way to say goodbye. So that moment also, you see, money may be very rich, but those, those are bank notes are right? bank notes in, in bank. So I think bring more worry about the dying person. Uh, or jewelries, I think more worry. At that time, surrounded by Kasuta, uh, your trusted friend with the love, surrounded. Then the dying person feel much happier. We can learn other animals. Youngsters, this animal with their mother, this is sure. Very safe, very happy. When when you separate, you see some scientist, you see experimented, young monkey, some young monkey, with their mother. Some uh, some young monkey separated. So these monkey with mother more playful. Those young monkey separate from mother. Constant to quarrel. Always. Very so that angry one. Ah, agitated. Agitated like that. So we are same. We are same. We are the same. So and then most important, everybody wants a happy life. Nobody is want a problem. So same. And all have same right to achieve happy life. So then, you see, thinking or awareness, these things, then you see uh, someone who on superficial, you feel little irritation, but deeper level, same human being, same right. So then, develop sense of respect, sense of concern of their well-being. We have so many questions. Are you ready? Oh, hmm? Yes. Okay. So then I think one, one, one important thing is when we develop some anger with someone, the anger actually, you see, need some kind of or target, target. So they uh, the person 
I say, create some problem for you. Then we, we look only that anger, then, oh, this person really creates a lot of problem for me. So I consider this my enemy. Then you say, anger, come. So at that moment, or at that moment, or I think that basically that person, if you ask, oh, that your enemy, today's enemy, from birth, whether you're enemy or not, no. And become your enemy, troublemaker, uh, without any causes or factor, no. It's the person who creates a little bit negative attitude towards you, there are many causes. And in that part of course, you also made some, 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 uh, some contribution. So you cannot blame entirely on that person. You also, you see, among the uh, no, among the uh, among the factor which creates that person who shows negative attitude towards you. For example, or small things happen. You immediately you see express negative, negative, negative. Then that negativeness feeling keep in your mind, day and weeks, months, years. Then the you get the impression that negativeness increasing. So something happened. That short moment, some angry face, harsh word. The next day, finished. Then no problem. So these things, and one my friend, one scientist, the Aaron Beck, Aaron Beck, now his age, uh, 97 or 98. So once he told me, when we develop anger, the object appears something very negative. But actually, uh, that negativeness, actually 90% of that negativeness is your own mental projection. So therefore, uh, I think we can, uh, we can examine our own experience. You see, uh, due to certain factor, you see you lost your anger with some, someone. Then, that moment, you see, you feel, oh, Kasota, Kasota, Tony Mandota, meeting a Namia Tegman Savos. You feel disgusted um, with the person, the oh. thing that you want. Don't want, don't want to see him or her anymore. Then the intensity of anger really reduce. Then someone uh, telling you or that person some nice word about you. Immediately, you see, when you heard that, it's in the years of the mental attitude completely changed. If there's a negativeness, is something absolute. Oh. Then, the factor which we, you feel angry, is it remain. But due to certain sort of factor, we change that. So therefore, so the, the most of the destructive emotion is actually uh, very much mixed with mental exaggeration. So we have this wonderful brain. So we should utilize this wonderful brain, analyze and look from wider perspective. And poor animal, they have no such ability. So they cannot think holistic way or analyze the situation. We have this wonderful brain. Sometimes I describe, or uh, if you accept, if you believe, Creator, then the God give us, you see, this wonderful brain. So when we develop emotions, we must utilize this uh, wonderful intelligence. Analyze, analyze, and look, uh, look from different angle. 
same person from one angle, yes, you feel irritation. Same person from another angle, oh, looks neutral. Another angle, oh, you may feel, oh, wonderful, good, like that. So therefore, the reality, something relative, no absolute. So when our destructive emotion develop, only from one angle. So the antidote of that, when develop anger, you try to look that object from different angle. Four di three dimension, four dimension, even six dimension. From above, look, from below, look. So this, I think we only human being can do, other animals cannot do. So it is very worthwhile, I said, to utilize extraordinary intelligence or extraordinary brain which we have. If we become slave of destructive emotions such as anger, then hardly you are because of following animal sort of because of the uh, attitude like that, or tiger or these things. They, they cannot, you see, they have no such ability. That's my view. I'm curious, you mentioned anger, Your Holiness, mm. and here at a place of healing, there are many, many people who have serious illness, and they have trouble accepting that diagnosis. Do you have advice as to how a person can accept their situation and move through it so they can continue to live? Well, what do you mean? As you know, but if you sort of as it through blood crash or the blood test or all these things, and then I think if sensible patient is supposed to accept. Some people, as you know, though Your Holiness, fight and, and cannot accept their diagnosis. Really? That's yes. what I've heard. <laughs> I've heard that. So I'm curious. It, it sound looks me that's foolish. <laughs> Any advice uh, as to accepting? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I'm see, good with that. I'm uh, good with that. I, I think firstly, you see, let that person cool down. Uh, uh, talk some nice things. Uh, uh, and then it's their mind, a little bit sort of uh, cool down, rest, cool down. Then, uh, firstly, you should express your real concern. Uh, let that person feel, oh, this person really taking care of me seriously. Then, eventually, the uh, 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 make known those difficult or seriousness may be better. I understand. I, I think the nurse or doctor, you see, telling this negative thing with, without smile, then maybe the patient, you see, uh, more difficult to accept. You see, take, you showed your serious concern about their sort of well-being, their illness, and showing you, you also, because of your own sort of a sense of worry or concern. Then maybe, I think, sensible a patient, I think then we'll listen. If still not, uh, not listening, then that's an exception. <laughs> then, then I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to your holiness, uh, some patients who do listen and accept, some people, as you know, are able to view cancer or their terminal illness as a blessing oh. or a gift. Does that make sense to you? Oh, it's some Tibetan, uh, some good practitioner as well as good scholar. 
see, one, one day, I know him. You see, he uh, met me, and then he told me, now uh, he already got some incurable sort of illness. So the doctor uh, saying something very serious illness. Then he told doctor, if my illness is really you see, incurable, cannot cure, or oh, terminal, then let me, because let me know. Then I'm thinking uh, something uh, preparation. Of course, we is thinking the life after life. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, very good. Let me let me sort of know the reality. Then accordingly, I will prepare. He told me that. So, as some people, even you see, the the seriousness about illness, you see, uh, do not do not like, uh, do not say want to hear. Or want to hear. Uh, this is self self deceiving. What about so -so -so. Like that. So, but then, individuals, different dependent disposition. So you have to act or treat according individual. So the ones of the case, like that. I don't know. We have so many questions from our audience and their caregivers. Mm -hmm. Here's a question from the audience, Your Holiness. How can we, as caregivers, deal with feeling helpless and frustrated when there's nothing more we can do for a patient? There are some cases, yes, it is a reality. You try your best, but then impossible to cure, except the reality. So then, is it just provide loving kindness or smile and sort of give them because of the, the feeling of loving kindness? So I think the person, as I already mentioned, the person at the time of dying, I think some kind of, because of the high spirit, that is important. Uh, so that comes surrounded by people with smile and with affection. Then that at least, you see, keeps some kind of high spirit sorrow. So if we, uh, if, we, if you know those people who have the concept of life after life, then they, they, at the time of dying, the mental state is very, very important for next life. And people, I think, according to uh, uh, Christian, Christianity, you see, the, at the moment of dying, remember God. And meantime, your spirit should be very high, more optimistic, more sort of the kasorda. Positive. Uh, positive. So that, I think, the very important sort of immediate sort of cause is to go to heaven. At that moment, demoral. And too much sort of anger or worry. Even though usually, you see, the very religious minded person, but at the time of dying, that kind of sort of completely lost hope and demoralized. And the worst thing, some agitated, agitated mind is very dangerous. Like that. There are many people here, Your Holiness, who I have, uh, have worked with the dying. And you know, caregiving is a very difficult task, doctors right? and of nurses. Course. Do you have advice on how caregivers can balance um, practicing compassion without burning out emotionally? Of course, difficult to say. I have no such experience. So imagine if I sort of, uh, imagine just, just simply you say, 
the I think at that uh, such such moment, the thinking, as I mentioned earlier, from wider perspective, just see thinking that the particular the particular circumstances or reality, but look from wider perspective, that I think helpful. Otherwise, I don't know. I don't know. So, I think the most sort of destructive emotion actually very much link with usually we call ignorance. That means uh, uh, not knowing the reality. Because you are sort of focusing just one aspect. So the only remedy is looking that from wider perspective, then you can see the reality, different aspect of the reality. As a human being, I think that, I think basically, that's our thinking. That's why, therefore, you see, we, you see, uh, some part of our curriculum, you see, study about the system of our mind, system of our emotion. And then, you see, the emotion, something because of vast and inter interconnectedness. So knowing these things, then easier to tackle uh, certain sort of particular emotions like that. So these are, usually we do that, but I don't know. Dr. another question, Your Holiness. Hmm? To be compassionate, do you have to believe in a personal God? No, no, that to be compassionate, must one believe in a personal God? Yes. Uh, I think yes and no both. Uh, to uh, many people, yes. I think I feel very purpose of concept of God and creator uh, is to, to develop firm sort of, sort of conviction, the value of compassion. So to, to some people, uh, you see, they believe God, a personal God or this very life created by God. So each individual, you see, uh, develop some kind of sense of very close, sort of, cause of that. Closeness. A closeness with God, like our Father. So more closeness feeling, more willingness, and also more sort of courage. I am the son of God. God described infinite love. So we all have seed of that compassion. And also, you see, uh, my father always taking care of me, always look after me like that. Wonderful. At the same time, out of seven billion human beings, over one billion non-believer. Uh, and among about six billion believer uh, different beliefs. Uh, some sort of ancient Indian tradition is a no concept of creator, but rather self-creation. Uh, so you see, uh, different concept, different perception, right? different perception, like that. So each have their own sort of city, uh, beauty. So people who follow of Christianity or Islam or Judaism and many other ancient Indian uh, non-Buddhist tradition or non-Buddhism, as a non-Buddhist as well as non-Jainism, you see they believe creator. Then Jainism, uh, 
uh, Buddhism, no concept of God, because of creator. So it's in different, uh, different mental disposition. Therefore, over the now almost 3,000 years, you see, the different time, different area, with different cultural heritage, different way of life, you see these different sort of philosophical views, you see, develop. So each have its own beauty. Uh, and it is the, the very helpful to overall humanity. I think this is very good among humanity. So many different mental dispositions. So different way of approach to promote inner value. The wonderful. Then to non-believer, uh, as I mentioned briefly, uh, one of my commitment is promotion of human value. That also I call kasota, kasote, basic. Secular. 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 I, I don't know, basic ethics or something. Uh, because now, uh, in India, the Indian constitution itself is very much based on secular concept. So according to Indian understanding, some Indian understanding, secular means respect all religions and also uh, respect non-believers. Uh, in the West, secular means disrespect religion, and also some, I think, negative attitudes toward religion. So the very word secular, different sort of that interpretation. interpretation. So in any way, uh, now out of seven billion, over one billion non-believer, this also human being. I think one problem is those non-believers, since they do not accept any sort of spirituality, spiritual value, so they also, you see, uh, not much pay attention about love, compassion, and forgiveness, tolerance, these things. So that's a mistake. Whether accept religion or not, that's one question. Uh, the, the, these basic human value, so long they are human being. You have to sort of, uh, you have to sort of, of that, give this deeper value. Without love, how can develop happy family without love and kindness? And actually, we are social animal. Social animal, you see they. Mentally, emotionally, uh, there must be some sort of uh, the way of thinking which uh, bring together. That's love. And with love, sense of community. So then we are social animal. One individual, no matter how powerful, just one single person cannot survive. Our survival depends on the rest of the community. Now, today's world, each individual's sort of future very much related with 7 million human beings. 7 million human beings happy, then your individual have maximum benefit. If 7 billion human beings, a lot of turmoil, turmoil, uh, turmoil or something, killing each other, like today's sort of situation. And one individual difficult to feel happy or peace. So therefore, uh, whether believe religion or not, you are a human being. Uh, you want happy life. So happy life from material, from money, from power, superficial. So the real happiness is related with mental experience, not sensorial experience.
sensorial experience, animals also have the same. We human beings, this marvelous intelligence, either, you see, become source of happiness or source of worry. You have all the facilities, uh, but at the same time, can be very, very unhappy person. Other hand, materially poor, but mentally very happy. One occasion I met one, uh, a Catholic monk in uh, Pasadena, Montserrat, in Barcelona. I, uh, no, not Barcelona, uh, uh, in Spain. Mm. So I met one Catholic monk. See, he spent, uh, he, I was told, see, he spent five years in, mount, in the mountain, hermit life, very little hot meal, tea and bread. When he come to see me, I already informed that story. So I asked him, I was told, you see, you spent five years in mountain, hermit life, and very little facility. Yeah. What kind of sort of uh, practice? What kind of meditation? And he answered me, meditate on love. When he mentioned that, in his eyes, something very, very special, joyful sort of, kind of expression. So such person, deliberately, you see the kasota, choose very simple kasota, simple city, simple life very little facility, but that person uh, enjoy immensely inner peace, happiness. And some of the billionaire, you see, very rich. I know some billionaire, you see, when we, after sort of exchange some nice words, then when we become something closer, then they express their deeper feeling, too much worry. A billionaire, at the same time, a very unhappy person. So money, matter, cannot produce inner peace, peace of mind. Peace of mind is a must develop within our own mind, not rely on external facilities. Actually, physical difficulties can subdue with rare because of the um, mental peace. But mental sort of because of the uh, crisis or disturbed mind cannot subdue by money, by power. So obviously, the mental level experience is more important than the physical level experiences. So we as a human being, the God's gift of this wonderful brain. So we should utilize you see, that brain in order to keep our inner peace. Then you, uh, you can consider genuine human being. If we just you see, use Kasada, because sensorial experiences, uh, some sort of also because of nice character, nine nine scenery or something or sports, and music, and taste, and smell, and touch, including sex. If you only consider these things are something very important, then like animal. So, we as a human being, we must sort of utilize a deeper level of our ability to think, to tackle our emotions, irrespective of whether believer or non-believer. So that I usually call, without relying on religious belief, use our intelligence and try to reduce 
destructive emotion and through increasing kaza, uh, constructive emotion like that. So if you have believed God, wonderful. If you haven't, okay. Still, you are a human being. Well said. <laughs> I'm curious. We have another question from mm. the audience, Your Holiness. Um, compassion is born of human connection, yes. right? So as we go forward, the world is so technologically driven. How do you keep that connection huh. in order to foster huh. compassion in, with, with a world that's driven by very impersonal technology, huh. and including in the medical field? Oh, a technology, machines, only used to provide physical comfort, not mind. So the method to bring mental peace, I think in the future maybe the technology may sort of make, may produce peace of mind. I don't know. I think at least another one century. <laughs> that also I think possibility of 1%. No. Otherwise it's difficult. So technology, uh, these bring physical comfort. And also technology bring us the, the power of destruction. Sad. Those really brilliant sort of minded sort of person, their wonderful brain used for destruction, create different variety of weapon. Very sad. I think technology, oh, you see, can immense help to kill people, thousands or hundred thousand, even million, within second, technology can do that. But peace of mind, We took another question from the audience. Yes. What is the relationship, Your Holiness, between healing... But, but at the same time, I love technology. You love technology? Oh, yes. <laughs> technology brings us here together. True. Without technology, I think you may have heard India <laughs> through some cause of the, rather, the messenger or something. Otherwise, it's impossible. Do you have a cell phone? Hmm? Do you have a cell phone? No. Oh, okay. Just... <laughs> no. I didn't think you did, uh, but I thought I'd ask that question. You know, you know one story. I do not... Oh, I love technology. In when when I, was, I was young, this is because screwdrivers are right. Screwdrivers. Screwdrivers and something, some simple machines. You see, I always keep with me. So some small, small sort of kasoda. Uh, repair work I can do like that. So I love you see, these things. Uh, uh, and also sometimes you see, repair clock like that. Small watch, impossible, difficult. So in any way, uh, uh, nowadays you see, they, these, uh, the, the, of these missions are too sophisticated. So I do not know. I, 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 I'm not trying to, to learn or to use. So let other people use. Oh. So therefore, one occasion, is some my friend from some different country is a, uh, telephoned me. So then my secretary is brought that because of phones are cell phone. Cell phone. And, and then uh, I, I of the listen. And then when I answer, I put this side. Then, then you say, oh, you say, my secretary laughing. Not necessary, just you can talk. <laughs> I, I do not know, you see. <laughs> While listen, you see here, I'm talking like this. <laughs> <laughs> Old fashioned, that's the sign of sort of ignorance. Yes. But that ignorance, not much serious. <laughs> <laughs> still, the, <laughs> but still, the message is, Connection, yeah. human connection is still needed no matter technology. 
So this, you see, technology, now the technology is wonderful. Now the question is the user of technology. Use properly, honestly, with sense of concern, well-being of others. Finally, well-being of 7 million human beings. Then technology it really can be very, very helpful. But technology used for self-centered sort of interest and how to destroy that person, how to destroy that nation, then very bad. Good question here from an audience member, mm. by the way. So much of disease mm. is triggered by people holding on to anger, resentment, yes, right. bitterness, pain. Mm. How do we get people to lighten up and let go, or should we? That's, again, you see, use our brain. What do you want to use to keep anger here? Days and weeks. It won't go away. And that eventually, see, uh, your physical health also, I think, ruined. So some scientists now they say constant fear, constant anger, hatred is actually eating our immune system. Other hand, more calm mind, more compassionate mind, uh, very, very helpful to sustain our, because of the, our health, like that. So therefore, see this, I think lack of knowledge about the system of emotion. So these information about different emotions, usually I call map of emotion, that come from some sort of ancient because of spiritual text read. But now time come, we should take these things uh, as a sort of, because of the academic subject, not religious matter. Although maybe irrelevant here, the books uh, which uh, translated from ancient Indian uh, Sanskrit language and also Pali language, uh, mainly Sanskrit and Pali, about 300 volumes. So in these 300 volumes, the, the content, we can make uh, three parts. Number one, science. Science of particle, science of mind. That should consider an uh, academic subject, a uh, science. And the second part, philosophy. There are some philosophical views are directly linked with uh, religion, in this case, Buddhism. Uh, but some sort of philosophical views, like quantum physics, a very similar concept in philosophical views. You see, nothing independently exists. So that exactly now quantum physics sort of the whole city concept very similar as far as because uh, of the external thing is met is concerned nothing objectively exists observer there uh, it exists no longer observer difficult to say the probability is where like that. Sometimes people describe the word probability, not certain. So that means no independent existence. So over 2,000 years, almost, I think, 2,500 years, is that concept already developed in India. Nothing independently exists. So that philosophical views, uh, we still, you see, we can, we can take as a philosophy, not a religious matter. So out of 300 volumes, you see, the, we already now lost, uh, uh, I think, cause almost, I think, a decade, around one decade, we started to, to, to compile 
science and philosophy, just pure philosophy, and then religion. Religion for Buddhist. But philosophy, some part of this philosophy and science is something common for everybody. So we already now compiled, you see, according to this I mean, co co content. Way. So uh, already translation, already now start. English translation, Hindi translation, Chinese translation, or uh, Mongolian translation, Russian translation, German translation, already carried. Like that. So maybe one or two years, this translation can be available. Then I think some of some of doctor also you see, uh, can learn something about the system of mind. So some of my friend, you see, respected old doctor. Now your age should be low, should be younger. Then you can study these things. <laughs> <laughs> if I heard you correctly, Your Holiness, oh, oh. you are talking about a map of emotions. Yes. Yes. How can we achieve positive thoughts, positive emotions, positive attitude in the face of so much anguish and suffering when we're dealing with people who are ill? Mm -hmm. Now the basis of positive and negative is connection with the cause of joyfulness, experience, and worry, pain. This no sort of because of the absolute sort of foundation. Uh, any emotion uh, brings inner peace, happiness, that consider constructive emotion. Any emotion immediately destroy your peace of mind and then gradually uh, ruin your own health. That emotion consider dest destructive emotion. Nothing to do with faith. Hmm. So then you, we analyze a certain sort of emotion. Long run, very sort of helpful. That consider positive, constructive. So these emotion, I think, I think you see, uh, we can say that those constructive emotions need some kind of training. Training means familiarize, right? Uh, familiarize. A destructive emotion very much sort of related with biological factor and as well the constant sorry, spontaneous sorry, without much sort of reasons. Of course, anger, some Artificial reasons, you see, may, may involve there, but basically just come. Then compassion, loving kindness, there are two levels. One level, love, compassion, is oriented about others' attitude. That kind of compassion is biased compassion, limited, much related with biological factor such as our ordinary sort of loves or these things, only your relatives, those people, your unknown people, not develop that. Now through awareness, uh, seven million human beings, actually uh, our brothers, sisters, and individuals' future, very much related with them, with their future. So thinking this line, then a uh, sense of sort of genuine sense of concern of their well-being and loving kindness. That's through sort of kasoda, through reasoning, through training, and then uh, familiarize, constantly thinking that. Then that becomes something living. So those constructive emotions, generally speaking, come develop through training. So that kind of living kindness is unbiased. 
Now here, you see, you have to make distinction, actor and action, such as a troublemaker. You see, sometimes you, see, you, may, you may need, uh, how should they take counter, sort of counter measure in order to stop their wrongdoing, but without losing compassion to that person. So this time, we make distinction as the action and actor. Action is, action is concerned, sometimes little sort of short temper and try to bring extra energy, try to stop that. But deeper level without losing sense of concern of that person. So actually, it's a little bit harsh word or tough sort of attitude out of sense of concern of their well-being. So that kind of, you see, appears as anger, but out of compassion. That, you see, uh, so this time, you see, compassion towards the person, actor, little bit sort of negative sort of attitude towards their action. We have this ability to make distinction. For example, for example, in the, in the church, when you make sort of, sort of confessions, right? confession, at that moment, you make distinction, yourself and your wrong, how should I say, wrong action. So now you realize I did something wrong. So at that moment, you already make distinction, your action, wrong action, and yourself. So now yourself realize that wrong action, confess. So we have that ability. So ap apply to other people. You see, make distinction. They are wrongdoing action. For that, sometimes we need because of counter measure in order to stop that, but without losing compassion towards this person. I think we have time for a couple more questions, Your yes, Holiness. Okay. You've had a a front row seat to what? the American, you've had a, a very intimate uh, um, experience with the American medical oh. system here at Mayo. If you were going to redesign the American healthcare system, what would you change? My knowledge, zero. <laughs> and how can zero, right? How, how can how can you say I this is a digital make change. Uh, make change. Without sort of full of knowledge. Difficult. Sign you know. Oh. Uh, I think those experts, you see, years, years experience. Then you see they not contented as as it is. The further development, further development. So then you will find more new ideas and then experiment and it worked. Then Kasuta, Kasura, Lalinkia. Then Tempich, Tempich, Tempich. Yes. Then you can make certain uh, changes. Oh, like that. So that's your responsibility, not my responsibility. <laughs> I just a patient, come and go, come and go. <laughs> I know you have great affection for your caregivers here at Mayo. Do you have advice to your care team as you prepare to leave? Uh, we already met, and each morning we always see uh, making jokes and sometimes some sweet like that. Uh, over one month, we really become very close friend. So human friendship entirely based on trust. Trust very much based on, I say they, honest, truthful. That very much link with warm heartedness. If you really respect other really keep a sense of concern of their well-being. Oh, 
then you can carry your sort of life honest, truthful. Nothing kasoda. Hydrate. So you can carry transparently. Transparency. That brings trust. Trust is basis of friendship. So I think generally speaking, whenever I went I went, meet people, if we spent just a few days, then very easily become close friend. Like that. So I think one peculiar or one unique thing, as soon as I enter the the place where I carry kaza, I get the the, kaza, the, uh, the medication. We always teasing, uh, teasing, joking. Oh yes, joking, joking. You know? So as soon as we met, it's a full smile, like reunion of long time friend. So I really enjoy that. Really. Each morning, I say, I have some kind of excite, excited. Oh, now I'm going to meet this wonderful sort of, uh, of the human being. So that's something very important. I hope you see other, other patients also, you see, receive that kind of, sort of attitude. And then, of course, it also you see, depends on the patient themselves. <laughs> That's true. It some patients patient. patient never show a smile. Then the nurses uh, smile also so sometimes difficult. <laughs> it is a human nature. You see some kind of so they, oh one occasion I was in Germany, some function. You see uh, I uh, I'm going there, you see that, at that function. See, as my sort of usual habit when I Kasota, passing through some street, which is some people. So one, one, in that case is one young lady is coming uh, from, from, from the other side. So as am I, so the usual practice, the smiling. No need introduction. As soon as human face saw, I already know one human sister. So I smile. So then that lady, I think young lady, so my sort of dress looks something strange. So her head also a little bit strange. So I think that lady felt my smiling is something a dirty mind or something. <laughs> so, so, so when I sort of smile, that young lady, more serious face. <laughs> <laughs> so then I also have the liberty to turn my face. <laughs> so like that, you see the nurse, you see to one patient, you see never sh sort of smiling or something serious, and then nurse smile, then that may get some agitation. That also possible, isn't it? <laughs> Human mind is it's quite, it's quite because of sophisticated, quite a variety like that. So then, uh, firstly, I think the nurse. She should receive that patient with a smile. That patient is something different. Then you also can act accordingly to their circumstances. If the patient very serious, then the doctor, the nurses or doctors also can be very serious. <laughs> <laughs> like that, isn't it? Good advice, though. I think I have time for one last question. So I, I mentioned you see, though, this morning. When we're departing, I also feel a little sort of sad. And I express, now we are departing. Uh, but our friendship till our death remain. No matter where we live. And I'm hopefully, I'm hoping uh, those uh, uh, within one month will become close friends. You see, if you have opportunity or, opportunity or time, visit India, impossible, you see, come my area, then let me know, I will receive you. Okay. Then also in this country, wherever, you see, the, some nearby, 
then uh, you, you can come and exchange our smile and some jokes, some teasing. Some, uh, I love you teasing. Like that. So particularly sometimes you see the gathering very serious, more formal way. Then some mistake happened, and I love that. You love mistakes? Oh. <laughs> you see, the seriousness according to the formality, some mistake happened. Then that at least <laughs> so some change, isn't it? One time in Mexico, one, uh, I think famous there was the uh, church, one sort of interfaith meeting. Uh, one Japanese, as a representative of Buddhist, uh, Japanese Zen, so as a Japanese sort of tradition, you say, well, I mean, each person, you see, carries some sort of or chanting as a, as a prayer or something. So that Japanese, as their tradition, rosary, while he chanting, you see, rosary, you see, because of that. Sending the beads. Because of that also. No. Oh. Sending the beads. Oh, like right that. And then somehow, what you call, sting, right? Sting of that beat broke. So some sort of beat scattered, but he still completely ignore that. Go like that. Uh, I feel love. Mm. Silly. So if I'm his place, I, I will pick up those, <laughs> uh, or see those beats. That's, that's more practical. Right. Uh, no use to show or nothing happen. <laughs> Silly. <laughs> <laughs> you see one, uh, uh, you see the, the little funny, 1954, uh, when I uh, reached Peking, the, the Indian uh, missions, you see, came to see me, the ambassador of India came to see me, and the Chinese officials, very serious, so they remain almost, almost like a statue. Oh. Then somehow, one goes, what, what, some fruit, mm. you see, because of that, Show, showing that way, and somehow that pot toppled. So these fruit scattered. Then those Chinese oh, who remain like a statue, very formal, then they, <laughs> they are kneeling there, kneeling there, because uh, they went down on their knees, uh, kneeling, and, and pick up. So I really enjoy that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so therefore, you see, one occasion in Delhi, one sort of interfaith meeting, one great Indian uh, spiritual sort of leader, usually they call Shankara Acharya. There are, I think, five, six Shankara Acharya, South India, North India, and one Shankara Acharya. Uh, I know many of them, you see, some are really wonderful, simple, run their life, very simple city, wonderful. But that occasion, one uh, spiritual leader, you see, you see quite, quite a big because of that, chair, quite big chair, and uh, I, beside, uh, beside him, I'm there. So then he, the whole, I think, the period, he remained like a statue, not a living human being, like that. So then I noticed, you see, his the chair, the, I think the uh, people who arranged these the kasoda, kasoda, arranged these uh, arrange these things, so I think they insist should be higher. Oh. So his sort of was the, uh, chair, legs. This, this, this leg, this, this, I mean, uh, not, not, not long enough. So they put some bricks so, and, and under there. I saw that. So then, uh, 
There are too much sort of statue-like, you see, not living human being. Then I, I feel, so I, I felt, I wish that brick should drop. <laughs> then, then the, you see, holy, I'll say the uh, holy spirit, because of spiritual leader, acting like sort of God or something, or uh, then have to act as a human being. So I really, you see, the, I, I also remain a very sort of, sort of different way, but my mind or oh, that brick should drop. <laughs> That's not compassionate. Oh? That's not compassionate. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> And one way I can say, you see, too much seriousness, seriousness, the audience may not, may not enjoy, may not happy. If something happened, everybody laugh. That, you see, compassion. Your Holiness, I have time for one final question because I'm sure some people have to go back to work. Yes. Do you, do you personally have a daily ritual to spark compassion in your life? Is there something that we could do in, in a ritual, perhaps daily, in order to um, foster more compassion in our lives, that we can become more compassionate? Oh. As a sort of practitioner, uh, Buddhist practitioner, uh, each day, morning, uh, four hours for meditation. Here, meditation means analytical meditation. Analyze, analyze. So about mind, about feeling, about things and world event, analyze. So. That immense help, you see, to develop a sense of concern of well-being of humanity. In our prayer, we always, you see, pray for entire sentient being. But other galaxies, if you have no connection, only pray. Then within this planet, uh, Limitless insects, birds, deers. In my, my sort of very place now, last one month now, spent some beautiful deer. I really feel, I said, the Kasota, love. But since they are animal, no language, impossible to share some of my experience. One dear leg is something difficult. I really feel very sad, but nothing can be done. And then, so therefore, the limitless sentient being on this planet, we can't do, we can't do. Now, seven billion human beings, this language, and human intelligence. So there is possibility to share, uh, exchange our different experiences in order to uh, achieve happy days and weeks and months or years. So I dedicated all my life till my death. I said, try to make little contribution, as much as I can, to bring more inner peace to enter seven million human beings. That, you see, we have to work. So then change start from individual. So then, on that sort of belief, you see, one individual's effort will not change the world. But we must start from where? From individual. 
That's I believe. That, that's my belief. So each of us, part of seven million human beings, clear goal, happy humanity, peaceful humanity, ultimately compassionate humanity, uh, through awareness, through education. So then, firstly, we individual. We should uh, practice these things. Then make example to other. Then more and more people. Uh, you see, share your experience from one person, at least their family members, their friends, ten, ten people. Each ten people share with their friends. That means hundred people. Hundred people, same way, thousand people. And ten thousand, hundred thousand, million, hundred million. That's the way. This change, we have to work. Some change. Everybody, you see, in their, uh, in their, because of live, 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 live. Uh, everywhere we say peace, peace, peace. Not much thinking. What is this trial of peace? Anger and a self-centered attitude. Now, how can deal that? Nobody thinking, not much, not much thinking, this line. So firstly, in order to achieve a compassionate humanity, uh, each of us have some sort of possibility to make some contribution. So here, I think a few hundred people, but those people who, who feel some sense of my sort of view or my feeling, then please try, uh, make a contribution. If individual is not much interest, then not important, just to leave it in this church, in outside, <laughs> whatever your daily life you can carry, no problem, <laughs> not compulsory. So like that, so that my belief, so wherever I go, I always talk in these things. And more and more scientists, more and more educationists, and thinkers, you see, are joining our effort. So we already sort of drafting education, curriculum for education for warm heartedness. Strictly, because uh, of secular way, not related with religion. So we already, with the help of Emory University, we already drafted first draft. So now this year, in India as well as America, eventually, we will, because of the discussion, discuss more larger way, and then eventually finalize. So change uh, better world, compassionate world, not through prayer. Of course, I pray to Buddha, to God. But I think in reality, I think over uh, at least 2,000 years, we pray everywhere. But the thing which we pray, not materialized. <laughs> so we should know the, uh, the, uh, the effect of prayer, this limitation. Obviously, this problem we created. Sometimes I jokingly use telling people, if you see, we uh, uh, meet you see, Jesus Christ or Buddha and ask, please bring peace on this planet, then both, I think, Jesus Christ and Buddha may say, you created this trouble. So you have the responsibility to solve. I always give you compassion, love. Uh, but you practice, you do not practice. Uh, since you created this problem, so you have the responsibility to solve. I think Buddha will say that. So now, so for that, you analyze. Weapon create problem? No. User of weapon. 
as I mentioned earlier, the technology is itself nothing. Uh, but the user had the scientific knowledge. You see, used for killing by human being, not other animal. Only we human being. So we have to change here. Combination of warm-heartedness from birth we already have. I think I think I may share the now last one last word. Uh, recent years, is some occasion, some scientist is he told our gathering. Uh, very young infant child, three, four months old. The cartoon, two children played together with love, smile. The infant child. Oh, no, no signal. No, no. So that was. No, you're good. You're oh. please. So, so, oh. so that infant child, when, when saw that cartoon, Two children helping each other with smile, with love. The infant child smiling, showing happy mood. The same child, when show cartoon, two children, negative attitudes, attitude. Then the child also show some kind of dislike. So such experiment, they say basic human nature is loving kindness. And more important, constant loving kindness experience, health better. Anger, fear, constant as occur, very bad for our health. That means uh, biologically, uh, the loving kindness, warm heartedness is a very fit, this body. Anger, not. So this factor, uh, conclusion is basic human nature is more positive, more compassionate. So when I heard that, I really uh, felt, oh, there is hope. Basic human nature is more compassionate, more positive. So we can work that further promotion. Uh, basic hum if basic human nature is negative, then no hope. So therefore, uh, now really worthwhile to utilize human intelligence to further develop or nurture this basic human nature. I think uh, mistake is, uh, mistake is all about that. The drawback is existing education system very much oriented about external value, not talking inner value. When inner value, uh, the subject of inner value come, then we always rely on religious belief. That will not cover seven million human beings. So there's no other choice except that through education, without touching religion, simply on the basis of scientific finding and our common experience and common sense, you see, we can educate children from kindergarten level, kindergarten level up to university level. So I think uh, within this year, uh, we may kasoda produce some sort of kaza, kaza activity, books, oh, kaza or curriculum. So then, I think in India and also oh in America, which is some cities, few cities already sort of developed the name of city of compassion, city of you know, kindness. Oh, wonderful, it's wonderful. So there's concerns of the mayors, they already say, you see, this very name, and accordingly, within their sort of area, 
which is some sort of stress about kindness or so result student uh, much sort of because of the happier peaceful so there is real hope real hope so therefore it's really worthwhile to make attempt i think the doctors i mean who are taking care about health you can lead that sort of movement because you practice these things wonderful not as a religious practice but simply serving humanity serving sort of because of the poor people poor people means ill because of the sick people wonderful thank you ladies and gentlemen his holiness the dalai lama Thank you. More. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.